Glory to God. I say glory to God. Come on, lift your hands. Glory to God. Glory to His name. We worship You, Lord. We magnify You in this place. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and even forevermore. Hallelujah. Well, greetings in the name of Elohim, Yeshua HaMashiach, and Ruach HaKadosh, the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord that He opened our eyes. He opened our ears. He opened our hearts to know who He really is. Come on, somebody. Aren't you glad you are saved today? Praise God. That your name is recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life, written with the pen of God's love, in the ink of Jesus' blood. And if you don't know Jesus today, now is the day of salvation. Amen. Amen. Now is the accepted time of God's mercy and grace for you to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's His name. There is no other name given under heaven which whereby men can be saved but the name of Jesus. Well, for those who, uh, of you who do not know me, I am Adam Glazener from Mighty Redeemer Ministries in Houston, Texas in the United States. It is an honor to be uh, with all of you today uh, and throughout these revival meetings we've had this week. How many have been to the revival meetings since Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday? Glory to God. We've had a good time in Jesus. Healings and prophetic words and uh, uh, salvations. I've, I've prayed with a few people to receive Christ and uh, uh, a lady received baptism of the Holy Spirit praying in other tongues and I know Bill has testimonies of people he's ministered to and Pastor we just want to thank you for allowing us to come in and be a blessing and bring the fragrance of the Lord in here and you guys are already having church every time we start a service man we're already lit up in the fire this is a worshiping church praise God this is a on fire church praise God Hallelujah! It's time to shake Trinidad with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. God is so awesome. He's the Savior, the Healer, the Redeemer, the Deliverer. Amen. He is the Dead Raiser. Hallelujah. He is the Resurrection and the Life. And when you have a true encounter with Him, you will not be the same. Hallelujah. He's the true and living God. Amen. He's the creator of heaven and earth. God is, uh, is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is no one like Him, nor will ever be. He's never lost a battle, nor will He ever lose a battle. Hallelujah. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and He bought me with His redeeming blood. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus will heal any sickness or disease. The blood of Jesus will drive out any devil. The blood of Jesus will save any lost sinner. The blood of Jesus has all power against all evil. The blood of Jesus is what poured out of our Savior on the cross to redeem our lives. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. We plead and declare and proclaim and release the blood of Jesus in this place and in Trinidad, in this nation, on this island that God is beginning to stir up His people, His sons and daughters, getting them prepared for a visitation of His glory, the Shekinah glory of God. We've been preaching about that this week in the meetings. If you have not uh, been involved in the revival meetings this week, you need to go on YouTube, on the internet, and look up Mighty Redeemer Ministries, or look up Freedom in Him, Bill's ministry, Freedom in Him, or my ministry, Mighty Redeemer Ministries. And you get on YouTube and look up the, the, the uh, video content that we have posted there of the services this week. And get the teachings, get the preaching, get the message that God is downloading fresh in this hour and in this time. 
as He is activating, He is shifting, He is bringing people back into the cloud with Him. He is turning heads to look at the burning bush once again. He's causing us to wake up to who He is again. Not man's religion, not uh, uh, centered around man's design of a religious institution, but God Almighty and His presence and His glory and His name. This revival and this awakening and this reformation coming into the earth today is a new fresh move of God. It's not old time religion. It's now time with God. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We have to move with the cloud, my brothers and sisters. We have to stay fresh in His presence. We have to stay fresh in His anointing. We have to stay fresh and where God is moving and what He is doing. Amen. Yeah. Yes, we have experience. Yes, we have elders among us who teach us. Yes, we have the things of old and traditions that are good. But those cannot become an idol before God. People make altars and they stop there every time there's a move of God. You cannot stop at every altar. you got to continue making altars and making uh, new uh, moves come to pass with God. you got to be a yielded, yielded vessel to go into atmospheres and go into regions and territories and allow God to manifest His glory through you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time to get on fire with fresh fire, fresh anointing, fresh bread from heaven that God is downloading into our spirits. We are coming into a season where we are starting to dream. We're having very visual dreams. Dreams that uh, are crazy dreams at night. But the, what it is is God's awakening all of us to the activity that's going on in the atmosphere, both angelic and demonic. And you will see dreams with all kinds of images, and you'll see prophetic dreams that God downloads to your spirit. And God is speaking to us when we are asleep in those times that everything's quiet in the natural. We're laying down resting, but He's communing with our spirits, and He's showing us strategies and divine assignments and warnings against attacks of the enemy. And it is vital that we seek the Lord when we have dreams at night and say, Lord, what did that dream mean? What did those animals mean in the dream and those people mean in the dream and those images mean in the dream? It's not a bunch of crazy nightmares and crazy dreams. God has specific instructions like He gave Daniel, come on somebody, and Joseph and others in the Bible where they had open visions and dreams and these instructions. It's time for us to come into a concise uh, understanding of God's communication with us as His people because we are in the great end time harvest for souls before Jesus comes. He's coming quickly, He said. Amen? And there's the great harvest before He returns. So He's awakening His bride once again. He's awakening His church once again. He's bringing us into that place without spot or wrinkle. He's bringing in divine alignment and divine order with Him to where we are in tune with Him with precision. Hallelujah. They that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Hallelujah. We're not led by religion. We're not led by man. We're led by Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Spirit of God is activating us and stirring us up once again this morning to take the land for Him. we got to be like Joshua. we got to be like King David. we got to go in and take the land. We need to walk with the apostles and prophets. And some of us, God will call us into those dimensions and those mantles. What are you? An apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher? Who are you? Are you a ministry of helps? An intercessor? Are you a worker of miracles? What is your calling? What is your gifting? What is the mantle that God has called you to walk in? Amen. And you just might say, well, I'm just a, a, a person who goes to church. I don't know all those things. Well, it is time to know. It is time to take it higher to God. It's, it's time to come out of just being a, a regular church goer and become a, a one who shifts into the high call of God in Christ Jesus. You don't want to miss your destiny. You don't want to miss your calling. Amen? Amen? There's lots of people who love 
Jesus and they've repented from sin and they're fighting against the enemy and they're going to go to heaven because they love the Lord. But we're called to accomplish great exploits in the kingdom of God. We are called to carry out heroic deeds by the Spirit. Uh, God wants us to rise up and come alive in the gifts and callings of God. Amen? He wants each and every one of us to fulfill our destinies. God wants us uh, not just to be uh, 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 walking into heaven saved by grace, amen, but not really uh, advance the kingdom of God any further than that. No, He wants us to rise up. He wants us to go forth, amen. He wants us to become bold as a lion, praise God. That's what the righteous are. They've got mighty power deposited on the inside of them by the Holy Spirit and fire in the name of Jesus. I declare the Holy Spirit and fire upon you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And pastor, God is shifting you higher. There is an apostolic mantle coming on you. And it is to govern in the Spirit. It's not just pastoring. It is fathering. It is mentoring. It is activating. It is prophesying. It is going forth and releasing encounter and revival and reformation in this land. The devil tried to take it out. But you made your stand. You said, Jesus, have your way. I don't own my life. You own it, Jesus. And the Lord's going to shift you. And there will be other ministries that will connect with you. And you will move as a team of oxen. And there will be strength and power that will bring the glory of God upon this land. Hallelujah. If I were you, I would connect with this man of God. He's going somewhere with Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Woo! Hallelujah. God is moving in this hour. He's moving apostolically. He's moving prophetically. He's moving evangelically. Amen. The pastors and teachers are now being dealt with in a more uh, sovereign, holy way by God. To be, to be after God's heart. Shepherds after God's heart. Amen. Amen. We've had enough prostitution in the church. Yeah. We've had enough pimps in the church. Yeah. They want to pimp your gift and prostitute yeah. your yeah. anointing. And the demons are coming out of the wilderness. And they're getting free from the control of Saul. Right. It's time to rise up like this. Yeah. And say God is, yeah. and, and do what God is putting your heart to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because what God downloads into your spirit is dangerous against the kingdom of hell. Religion won't throw the devil out. It's the anointing of God. It's the name of Jesus that destroys the works of the devil. Hallelujah. The mighty name of Jesus. The name that is above all names. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise God wherever Jesus went when He walked this planet in the city of Jerusalem. He turned that place upside down. He shifted atmospheres. He wrecked the forces of hell. He raised the dead and healed the sick. He drove devils out of people. He worked impossible miracles that man couldn't do, but He did it. He, had, he called His twelve disciples, anointed them, activated them, and shifted them into the dimension of glory. And that's what He's doing in this hour. That was then, and this is now. We are the ones to carry revival now. We are the ones to be the carriers of His glory. God is calling you. Will you answer the call? Well, I'm just a good Christian. I just go to church and I pay my tithe and I love Jesus. Well, praise God for that. At least you got in. Because if you're not born again, which is the greatest and most important miracle of all, being saved, if you don't even have that, you've, lost, you've missed the whole show. But God doesn't want you to stop there. Amen. You just got in the door. Right? Unless you're born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God, Jesus said. Unless you're born of the, uh, of the Spirit and of water, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen. So once you enter, you receive Jesus, you're born again. The day that you got born again, you received the whole Glory. package. Yes. The new covenant in His blood. The day you received Jesus is the day you were uh, received the right to be healed, the right to be set free, the right to be delivered, the right to be uh, forgiven, the right to receive eternal life. It's all in your born again nature. Yes. Access it. Access the healing in God. Access the deliverance 
hearts in God. Access the redemption. Access the authority over the enemy. Jesus said, Behold, I give you power Hallelujah. to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. you got to know who you are in Christ I Jesus. Once you get in there with God in worship and prayer, you hang out with Father God, Papa, Daddy God, and He begins to show you who you are. You are His son. You are His child. Amen. And then His word comes alive in you. Amen. And when the devil tries to steal what Jesus gave you at the cross, you uh, submit to God and draw near to Him and resist the devil and the devil will flee because your daddy's voice will rise up in you saying, Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. By the stripes of Jesus I'm healed. Through His poverty I'm made rich. By His grace I'm saved. Through His blood I'm forgiven. Praise God I am delivered. I am saved. I am set free. You can't have me, devil. You are defeated at the cross. You are disarmed. Somebody in here needs to rebuke the devil out of your life. The devil's after your call of God. The devil's after your family. The devil's after your health. He's after your finances. He's after the call of God. But if you stand up against the enemy, Jesus has your back. He said, declare my word. Speak my name. In my name you will cast out demons. In my name uh, you will speak in other tongues. You'll take up serpents. You'll be able to handle the powers of darkness. Praise God. You drink any deadly poison, it shall by no means hurt you. Lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We have power from on high. We have victory from Jesus. We have authority over the enemy. So act like it. Hallelujah. It's time to go to war. David was a warrior. He went to battle inquiring of God, should I go? And he consulted with the prophets. And when they received the word of the Lord, David took the word of the Lord, went on battlefields and defeated nations and armies. We fight the battles in the spirit realm. We're not battling against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places in the spirit realm. We've got to get in tune with God and discern what's going on in the spirit realm. Amen. And then if we take our uh, uh, we take our rightful places and we get into our divine assignments. Each one of us has an assignment from the Lord to accomplish while we are here on this earth. That's right. Each and every one of us. And Pastor Andrew speaks to that every time he preaches. He's teaching and preaching and downloading things that God shows him and activating those assignments. What, and who you are in Christ and where you need to be going. But Pastor Andrew is not Jesus. I'm not Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. The church is not Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes. We have to follow Jesus, each and every one of us, individually and personally. He is our first love. We are lovers of Jesus. And there's a fragrance of His presence in here today. The fragrance of His presence. A fresh fragrance. Hallelujah. God always put the worship team in front of the army to defeat the enemy in the spirit realm and then the army in the natural realm took dominion and won the battle. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. We worship You, Lord. It's not three songs, a nice little message and go home. Amen. Thank God this church don't just sing three songs and that's it. We probably had ten or twelve songs. The worship team got out in front of the, the, the army this morning. Hallelujah. Break open the atmosphere and release encounter of God's Spirit and so that His fragrance can flow and touch people. The Lord is compassionate. He loves people. He died for people. Humanity. And Adam and Eve fell in the garden. The Lord's heart was broken for them. Adam. He called out to Adam. Where are you? He was longing and looking for Adam. Something disconnected them. The disobedience ushered in a curse. The enemy gained authority in the second heaven over the earth. Thank God Jesus came to redeem us. 
Reconcile us to the Father. Restore that uh, relationship between us and the Lord. And the enemy has been made gone off to make war with the saints. Yes. But his day is coming. Satan and demons will be cast into the lake of fire. Yes. And the smoke of their torment will rise forever. Yes. Thank God Jesus rescued us in the middle of this yes. curse that's on this planet. Hallelujah. Until he burns up the elements with fire and creates a new heaven and earth. Until then, he said, occupy until I come. So we are to rise up and take dominion. The original dominion that He gave Adam and Eve. He gave them dominion over this earth. He gave them the authority. They lost it with the devil when they obeyed the serpent. Jesus gave it back to us. Now we have dominion. So if we yield our authority to the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit will use us. He will come through that channel. He will come through that vessel, that authority. Lord, have Your way. Some people are yielding their authority to the enemy. They're speaking all kinds of crazy stuff out of their mouths. They're doing witchcraft. And they're, they're doing uh, uh, encounters with Satan. And they're used of the demonic. Or they're releasing things out of the flesh. Amen? Out of the sinful nature. And it's wickedness. And they're giving strength to the enemy. But they, they, there are more with us than there are with them. Amen? Only a third of the angels fell when they made war in heaven with Lucifer. Only a third of the angels fell. Two-thirds of the angels stayed intact. Amen. Praise God. They are more with us than they are with them. Praise God. We have many angels assigned to us. Thank God for the angels. The angelic activity. When we stand up and declare the Word of the Lord, the angels are being activated and enforcing the Word of God. Making a perimeter around this place. A perimeter around the portal that God has opened up. For His glory to come in and reside. That glory that we've been preaching about this week, Pastor. The real God. The real, true and living God. That was carried in the ark in the Old Testament. And now we are the joints and ligaments of the body of Christ that form the ark. That carry the glory in the Spirit. All the Old Testament's type and shadow of the new covenant, the new testament, that we are in Christ Jesus. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Well, go to Mark chapter 1. Let's have some fun with Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. You're going to find yourself laughing. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha. Woo, Jesus. Just let it flow. He's blessing you. He's healing you. He's shifting the darkness off of you. Jesus isn't depressed. He's the one that's the most full of joy all the time. And He's suspended in eternity. He's not governed by clocks and times and dates and seasons. He's, in, he's forever. He's in the now forever spirit realm. Amen? God is just... He is that He is. I am that I am, He said. He's there. So His joy never runs out. And when you tap into His joy, you'll laugh your way through attacks. You'll laugh your way through hell trying to take you out. You'll laugh at the devil like God sits in the heavens and laughs. You'll laugh at the enemy because you know your victory in Christ Jesus. If depression tries to grip you, suicidal thoughts, wanting to give up, you need to tap into the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. Just ask Nehemiah about that. The Old Testament. I won't, don't let the Old Testament saints show us out now. We're in a better covenant. Now we have access anytime we want. Just like you can pray in tongues anytime you want. You can receive healing anytime you want. You can quote the Word of God anytime you want. You can pray anytime you want. Well, you can access His joy anytime you want. You have the authority over the atmosphere that is around you. The atmosphere around you does not have the authority to cave us in, but we have dominion from the inside out. Ha ha ha! You almost got me, but no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Be gone in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Jesus! Woo! That's joy, people. Shatala bakata. Receive.
receive it. Woo, just receive it. Just be happy in Jesus. Just be joyous in Jesus. I'm going through hell, preacher. Well, come into heaven, praise God. Get in the joy. Get in the river of life. Hallelujah. There's a river that flows from the throne of God. And it's happiness and joy. And it's strength and power. Some people just dip in their toes. I don't know if I want any of that. That's crazy. You need to read Ezekiel 47. In fact, let's go there. We'll change Mark 1 and let's go to Ezekiel 47. Ezekiel 47. Oh, Jesus. He's changing gears. That's all right. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. He knows what we need to hear. He knows what to download into our spirit. Yeah, receive it. If you want to laugh, laugh. If you want to shout, shout. There's freedom in the house. Who the Son says free is free indeed. Praise God. The Lord sets us free to be with Him. Hallelujah. What is Jesus' protocol? Freedom! Joy! Healing! That's His protocol. Hallelujah! Ezekiel 47, 1. After he brought me again unto the door of the house, this angel was visiting him, and behold, the waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the front of the house faced toward the east, and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then he brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around the way outside to the outer gate by the way which faces eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the vine in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters and the waters were up to the ankles. That's where a lot of people are stuck, aren't they? They get in a little bit in his presence. I don't want to be too crazy though. Like them tongue talking... Jesus shouting, holy rollers. Well, I'm rolling in holiness, praise God. Call me one. I don't care what you call me. I'm a lover of Jesus. Woo, they're going to persecute you anyway. Thank you, Lord. And then verse 40, measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Got to get in the river. The river of life, the river of God. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters to the waist. After he measured a thousand, it was a river that I could not pass over. When you keep going with Jesus and keep going with Jesus and keep going with Jesus, the river starts picking you up to where you're off your feet. And it's not you anymore. It's Him. That's what this revival is all about. I'm not talking about just three or four meetings this week. I'm talking about a global awakening, a, a international, a national and international awakening revival that God is moving across this earth. And He's waking up churches and ministries and apostolic yes. centers and revival hubs and, and even home gatherings and believers everywhere. There is an awakening. God is pouring in the river. He's picking up His people. Hallelujah. And it's going to get to the point where uh, people are going to have to make a, a decision. Am I going to go with my tr church tradition? Or am I going to go with Elohim? Am I going to go with the river? Or if I'm going to go with man's religion? Many are in the valley of decision. God is coming to deal with His people. Judgment begins at the house of God. Yes. Who are we following? That's the question. Well, if you're following God, the river's going to pick you up. Verse 5 again, after he measured a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over, for the waters were risen. Waters to swim in a river that could not be passed over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said unto me, Son of man, have you seen this? And then he brought me and caused me to return to the bank of the river. And when I returned, behold, the bank of the river, there were very many trees on one side and the other. And he said to me, These waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go to the sea which is being brought forth into the sea, and the waters of the sea shall be healed. It shall come to pass that everything that lives, which moves wherever the river shall come, shall live. 
And there shall be very great multitude of fish because these waters have come there, for they shall be healed and everything shall live where the river comes. Amen. Get in the river. Life is in the river of God. Joy is in the river of God. Healing is in the river of God. Victory is in the river of God. Everything that gets in the river lives. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Somebody's getting a breakthrough this morning. You've been believing God for a supernatural breakthrough. It is on the way. The breaker anointing is coming your way. God's going to plunge you into the river. And it's going to manifest your miracle. And life is going to come into you, you and your family, into your marriage, hallelujah, and into, uh, uh, into the land because you're a yielded vessel. You're a channel for the river to flow through. Amen. Go back to Mark 1. I didn't forget. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. Glory to God. His presence is getting stronger. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The reason that the Word of God comes fiery and strong is to shake us and to bring us into real, to the reality of, of what God is trying to accomplish. You know, God is soft and quiet and gentle with His still small voice. But then there's also the Lion of the tribe of Judah, which roars, amen? And God brings a roaring word at times to shake us out of our apathy and, us, and our sleepiness. And He wants us to listen to what He's saying so that we can open our hearts to receive and be activated because Jesus said, follow me and these works that you see me do, you will do and greater. And so if that's what He said, that's what we need to do. But how do we do that? How do we get in there? How do we become what the gospel of Jesus Christ said we could do? Well, the only one that can teach us that is the Spirit of God. The only one that can teach us that is, him, is God Almighty, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Walking this planet uh, uh, here in Mark chapter 1, uh, the examples that the uh, Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John walked around as a scribe writing down everything they heard Him say and the things they saw Him do by the power of the Spirit, Jesus brought in the realm of glory to the people of Jerusalem. He brought them into the realm of the Spirit of God in a way they'd never seen before. They were astonished at His doctrine as one as having authority. They were astonished at the miracles. They were astonished at the things He did. And the, and the Pharisees and religious spirit could not stop Him. And no man put Jesus to death. Jesus said, I'll choose to lay my life down that I may take it up again. What's the devil going to do with somebody like that? Nothing. And we belong to Jesus. Woo! And if you don't belong to Jesus, you better come to Jesus before it's too late. Mark 1, verse 1. Let's look at how Jesus wrecked Jerusalem. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who shall prepare your way before you. Talking about John the Baptist in front of Jesus. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Make His path straight. And that's the message in this hour for Trinidad. Prepare the way of the Lord! Trinidad! Make your paths aligned with His paths! Then the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. Make His path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and a, with a belt of a skin about his waist. And he did eat locust and wild honey. That was a very undignified looking man of God. When we were received from somebody that's not dressed as nice as we are dressed when we stand and preach. But if the anointing is on that man of God or woman of God, we need to be in tune with the Spirit of God enough to know who the real sons and daughters are that are carrying His glory. Regardless of the outward appearance, God does not judge the outward appearance. He judges the heart. It don't matter if you're tattooed from head to toe, body pierced all over, you got crazy looking hair, or you're the most distinguished, dignified looking person. Sharp first class. God is looking at the hearts of the rich, the middle class, the poor, all people of all nations and all kinds. God is looking to the heart whether or not you believe in Him and are saved through Jesus Christ or not. 
Because that's all that's going to matter on Judgment Day anyway. Because it is appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come on into the joy of the Lord. Or depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. The heart. God is taking us into the place where we understand His ways so that our ways can become His ways. Amen. Verse 7, And John the Baptist preaching, he had a backbone, amen, to stand up for the Lord God. And preach saying, There comes one mightier than I after me, the uh, thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. People say, I'm not qualified. None of us are qualified. Amen. We're saved by grace. Amen. He qualifies us. Amen. When we walk with Him, His grace qualifies us to do what He's called us to do. We cannot qualify ourselves to walk in the power of the Spirit. And John the Baptist knew his humility before God as well. Amen. Verse 8, I indeed have baptized you with water, but He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up out of the water, He saw the heavens open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon Him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, You are my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit drove Him into the wilderness. Oh Lord. That's what we got to recognize. What season we are in. God, you come into Jesus. You're, having, you're on this high and you're loving Jesus. Born again. And then all of a sudden, everything seems like it's getting wrecked. What's going on here? What happened? feel like I'm going through hell all the time. Recognize in the wilderness. God's got to drive you away to bring you back purified and in, sanctified, come on, and trained in Him. He's got to get you away from uh, uh, the surroundings of man and religion and, and all the stuff the devil's poisoned people's minds with and get you alone with Him. Maybe not physically you're away from people, but in the Spirit you're going through a wilderness right now. And just let God take you through the wilderness so that He can prepare you for what He's calling you to do. There is a process in the wilderness to go through. And many people, many people mistake it as if they are backsliding or that the devil's trying to, uh, or the devil's taking them out and attacking them. And really it's just an impasse that you got to get through to take on transformation of the Spirit of God. Verse 13, And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast. And the angels ministered unto him. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. We have no business preaching anything except the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. And as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew's brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. God's desire is people. Men. Man mankind is what that means. People. Human beings. I will make you fishers after people. God loves people. I love people, says the Lord. God is love. God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, people, who, whoever people believes in Him should not perish, right? But have everlasting life. It is not God's will that any man perish, any people, any person Amen. perish, but that they come into the knowledge of salvation through Jesus Christ. So Jesus said, come after me, I'll make you become fishers of men. Now here's where the heat comes on against the enemy. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And when they had gone a little farther from there, he saw James the son of Zebedee and John his brother and also were in the ship mending their nets. And immediately he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. And they came in, uh, to Capernaum. And immediately on the Sabbath day, he entered the synagogue and taught. 
Just another day in the synagogue. And they were astonished at His doctrine. Oh, here we go. Jesus is shifting the atmosphere with the gospel of the kingdom of God. Not the Pharisees' religion of control by the law, but the gospel of the kingdom of God, which has authority. Amen? True authority over all the curse, over all demonic spirits, over all sickness, disease, over every problem, everything that is not of love, joy, and peace, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God... Uh, the gospel of the kingdom of God has authority over everything that's in yes. opposition against God. And so it comes to challenge. It conflicts. Verse 22, And they were astonished at His doctrine, for He taught them as one that had authority, and not as the scribes. That religious spirit, right? And there was in their synagogues a man with an unclean spirit, a demon spirit, and he cried out, that spirit immediately recognized Jesus because those 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 uh, uh, demons, they know who Jesus is. They, they remember. They were cast out of heaven, right? Angels were originally cast out of heaven. Everyone knows Jesus. Even the people in hell know Jesus. Every devil knows Jesus. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Yeah. So the, this unclean spirit said, Let us alone. Well, it was more than one, it sounds like to me. Yeah. Let us alone. Yeah. This man had strongholds. This man had demons. Yeah. Yeah. What do we have to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Are you come to destroy us? I know you, who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him saying, Hold your peace and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him, well, I bet that was a sight. Convulsion is not just a nice little... And it's gone. Probably on the ground contorting and screeches coming out. That's how demons act. They like a lot of shows, don't they? Yes. Well, don't pay attention to all that. Just tell them to leave in Jesus' name. Put the name of Jesus on them while they're screaming and crying on the way out. Hallelujah. Hold your peace and come out. Well, Jesus didn't let it. This was, these screaming and crying told them to be quiet. Come out. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him, he cried with a loud voice and uh, he came, it came out of him. And they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves saying, what thing is this? That's going to happen on this uh, uh, land, in this nation, on this island. People are going to look at these deliverances and healings that you guys are act beginning to become more stronger with and stronger activation on the inside of you that's going to cause people to be set free from demon powers. Amen. And the people are be, will be healed and saved in the revival and awakening coming into this nation. Uh, uh, and others observing these miracles and deliverances are going to say, what is this? Well, let me tell you what it is. It's Jesus. And you need it. Because people cannot deny genuine miracles and deliverances. They cannot deny when someone's life uh, has been transformed and changed. Amen? Completely from darkness to light. <clears throat> and what they're saying, verse 27, saying, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? It's not a new doctrine. God's the same yesterday. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God hasn't changed. It's just that authority coming in, driving out the enemy. What new doctrine is this? For with authority He commands even the unclean spirits, and they do obey Him. Yes. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region round about Galilee. Now when we're operating in this type of power, people, do not take the glory. Oh. Don't get puffed up that we did something great. Oh. Oh. It is my ministry and my anointing you need to come get around. It's not your anointing and it's not your ministry. God will not share his glory with another. No flesh will glory in his presence. Let him who boast, boast on the Lord. Amen. So Jesus' fame spread. Well, guess what? When Jesus uses us, fame can spread. Amen? Amen. Greatness can come. Amen? Amen? You can be elevated in the sight of mankind. 
Stay meek as Moses when that happens. Give God all the glory. Verse 29, Immediately when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John, but Simon's wife, mother, lay sick of a fever. And immediately they told him of her. And they came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. He just took her by the hand. Virtue flowing, anointing yes, flowing. Glory. you got to stay full of the oil. Amen. Hallelujah. Full of the oil. I preached about that this week. Pay the price. Be like the five wise virgins Amen. that paid the price to be with the bridegroom. It's divine romance with Jesus. Just want to be with Him and in His presence. Let Him shift you into manifesting His gospel of power to people. So He took her by the hand. Fever left. That's real power. Amen. Verse 32. At evening, when the sun had set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, them that were possessed with demons. And all the city was gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of various diseases, and cast out many demons, and allowed not the demons to speak, because they knew him. And in the morning, rising up a great while, before day, he went out and departed into a lonely place and there pray. This, what I'm preaching is the gospel of the kingdom of God. Amen. Not what we say, but what He says. Amen? Amen? It's not our word, but His word. Amen. We're just supposed to be the messengers and the vessels that repeat what He said. Because if we just take His word, I'm just reading line upon line, precept upon precept. I'm just reading the word of God. And the Word of God does not return void without accomplishing that which He desires and prospering in the matter for which He sent it. The Word of God has power. Amen? It carries power over the enemy. The Word of faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. We worship You.